in. Now, one trend that I'm loving at the moment is marbled buttercream. So for this week's video tutorial, I thought I would show you how to add this effect on the side of your cakes. Now, marbled buttercream looks great in so many different colors and it can be used for so many different themes of cakes. In this video, I'm gonna be using a greeny blue color palette. So I'm also gonna be showing you how to turn your cake into an underwater scene. Okay, let's get started. So I first of all got my sponge cake. Now this is a five inch sponge cake. So it measures five inches across and five inches in height. And I've just divided this into four layers. Now I've also got a batch of vanilla buttercream, which I've just colored in this light blue color using the Wilton Azure Blue. And I'm gonna use this to fill and cover my cake in its first layer of buttercream. Now I do have a more detailed video on the channel which shows you in more detail how I fill and cover my cakes in buttercream. So I will put a link to that in the description below. Now, once my cake has been filled, I'm gonna go around the edge, just popping on a crumb coat. And all this is gonna do is lock in any of those loose crumbs around the edge of the cake. I can then go in with my metal scraper just to smooth out those edges. And just going in with my offset spatula along that top edge, just pulling that buttercream towards the center. And I'm gonna pop this in the fridge for around 10 to 15 minutes, just for that to firm up slightly. So once our cake has come out of the fridge, I'm gonna put another thin layer of buttercream onto the top of my cake and just filling any gaps around the side. Now I will be covering the sides of my cake in extra buttercream with the marble effect, but this won't be going onto the top. So I wanna make the top as nice as I can. And again, using my offset spatula, just bringing that in from the side. Once you're happy with how that top is looking, I'm just gonna go in around the edge. So we've got a nice smooth base for our marbled buttercream to stick onto. Now, once you're happy with the top of your cake and also you're happy that the sides of your cake are nice and straight, I wanna pop this back in the fridge just so it's nice and chilled before I add my marbled buttercream. Now, just before I do this, I actually wanna measure my cake. So taking my ruler, I can see that it's just under five inches in height. Now, if you've got a fabric tape measure or just a piece of ribbon, I'm gonna lightly wrap this around the side of my cake just so I can get an idea of the circumference. So we've got 17 inches and I'm going to pop this back in the fridge so that it's nice and chilled. So in order to create my marble buttercream what I've done is split a batch of buttercream into four separate bowls and coloured it in four different colours. Now I want my cake to look like an underwater scene so I've used greens and blues and a jade colour. Now I've cut out a piece of parchment paper or you can use some clear acetate if you would prefer. Now I've cut out my panel and this is one inch taller and wider than the cake just so that I've got a small amount of space just to pick it up with my fingers. So this one is six inches in height and 18 inches in length. Now the idea behind marbling buttercream is exactly the same as if you've tried marbling fondant. We want to mix the colors together but stop before they're fully combined. Now the reason that we're not doing this on the side of the cake is as you smooth out the side of the cake, you drag the buttercream around and it mixes it together rather than keeping it with that marble effect. So I'm gonna take my four different colors and using a clean bowl, I'm gonna pick a few of my colors. So ideally a lighter color and a darker shade and just start mixing those together. And as you can see, I've stopped before it's all combined. I then wanna use my offset spatula and just lay that down on my parchment paper and continue over the whole surface. Now, there isn't an exact way you wanna do this. You just wanna make sure that as you're laying them down, you're not mixing the colors together too much. Just filling up all the spaces. Now, when it comes to how much buttercream you wanna lay on your parchment paper, I wanna come all the way to the bottom edge as this is gonna sit against the bottom of my cake. Now, the thickness of my buttercream, I want to be similar to how 
much I would use if I was covering the side of my cake. So around four to five millimeters in thickness. So once my buttercream has covered my parchment paper, I've left a tiny bit of the edges just so I can hold it with my fingers. But I'm gonna take my smoothing tool and without pushing all the way down, I'm gonna smooth that buttercream along. This is gonna be the side that pushes against your cake. And by doing this, it's just gonna create nice smooth sides. Now at the bottom, I'm just gonna run my smoothing tool along the edge of my parchment paper to make sure it's nice and flat as this is gonna sit on the bottom of my cake. So once you're happy with how smooth that is, I'm gonna bring in my cake that's been chilling in the fridge. Now taking my parchment paper, I'm gonna lift this up so that the bottom is against the bottom of the cake. I'm then gonna push this against the side, first with my hand, and then I'm gonna go in with my paddle smoother that I use for smoothing fondant. And just really lightly push that buttercream onto the side of my cake so that I know that it's stuck. And I'm gonna work my way around the entire cake. So once the whole side of the cake has been covered in my parchment paper and I've smoothed it down as much as I can, I'm gonna pop this in the fridge for around 10 minutes just for that buttercream to firm up so that we can remove the parchment paper. Once your cake has been in the fridge and that buttercream has firmed up, we can now take off our parchment paper. And as you can see, we get this really pretty marbling effect. Now on this back edge, to neaten that off, all I'm gonna do is just take a bit more buttercream, smooth that in. Now, if you find that the two sides are not actually coming together and they are a lot longer and you've got a bit of overhang, you can just use your knife, trim down the edge and take away any excess. If there are any areas that need filling, you can just go in with some more buttercream, filling any gaps. Now along the top, I've got a slightly too much buttercream than what I'm after. So I'm gonna trim off any excess. Now I'm using my offset spatula and you can either run this under a tap or I've just got a container of some boiling water that I'm just gonna dip that in and use some kitchen paper to wipe off any excess. Now this is just gonna slightly warm up the metal of my scraper. I can then go in on that side, take off the excess. Now I'm just doing it roughly to start with and then go in again, just following the top of my cake. Now again, I'm just gonna heat up my spatula and take off any excess water and just pull from that edge and by heating up the offset spatula, all you're doing is slightly melting that buttercream. It's gonna allow you to get a nice smooth edge. So there we have the marbling on the side of our cake. Now I'm gonna transfer this over onto my board and create the decorations to add onto my cake. So for the board that the cake is gonna sit on, I've just got a nine inch cake drum and this one just measures a centimeter in height. And I'm gonna cover this in some white fondant. I'm then gonna pop on a small amount of water so that that fondant will stick. Take off any excess, smoothing that down onto my board. I can then finish off my cake board with a white ribbon around on the edge. So I'm just gonna stick that down with some of that excess buttercream. For the decorations that are gonna go on the cake, some of them I'm gonna make by hand and some of them I'm gonna use molds for. Now, there are so many under the sea molds available and I just have a few here. So I've got a few that have shells on them. I've got this Wilton one that has a seahorse. So whatever the style of underwater cake you wanna create, you can use some different molds to create different elements to go on the cake. Now, I've got a selection of different colors of fondant that I'm gonna use in my mold. Now, you want quite a firm fondant for using in your molds and if you're finding that your fondant is quite soft you might want to mix it together with some gum paste or add a small amount of tylose powder so the first thing i'm going to do is take the first mold that i want to use and this one just has seashells in it now to prepare the mold i'm going to take a fluffy brush with a small amount of corn flour and just dust inside my mold so that my fondant isn't gonna stick. For my shells, I'm gonna take three different colors. I've got a white fondant, an ivory fondant, and a gray. I'm gonna mix those together, but stop before it's completely combined, and just push that into the gap. Now I'm gonna roll over the top with my rolling pin and just make sure that whole space has been filled up. I can then use my craft knife, and I just wanna get off any excess, so I'm just running that 
along the top. I'm gonna tip that out and that's gonna give me my first little shell. So I'm gonna make a few of those. I'm just gonna leave those to one side for that fondant to dry and move on to some of the other shapes. Now, if you don't have a mold, you can just create these by hand, just by cutting out a star or forming the shape of a seashell. It just makes it a lot quicker and a lot easier, especially if you're new to modeling. Now for the seahorse, I'm gonna do exactly the same, but once I push my shape out, I'm actually gonna put a cocktail stick in the bottom of this one because I want it to stand up on the top of my cake. Now another alternative to using fondant or gum paste in the molds is to actually use candy melts. So you could just use colored candy melts. Wait until the candy melts are completely hardened and tip them out. Now around the edge of my cake, I wanna create some strands that kind of look like seaweed going up the side of my cake. Now I've rolled this out until it's around two millimeters in thickness. And I'm gonna use my pizza cutter and just first of all, cut along the top and the bottom so they're nice and straight. And you can make these all different lengths. Now I wanna create movement in these. So you could twist them or I'm just gonna slightly ruffle them up and lay them back down. So they look like just moving with the water. Now, as well as these, you could take one of your colors and I'm just gonna take off some small balls and just taper them down on one side and then take my cone modeling tool and just push that into the end. And I'm gonna make a few of those in different sizes. And I'm just trying to create some coral you would find under the sea. Now I'm gonna take all four pieces and just push these together. Use my craft knife to cut that down to give us some coral. Now, lastly, I've got a ball of my fondant, which I'm gonna roll out. Now I'm gonna trim off the bottom. I've then got some different size piping tips that all have circle ends, and I'm gonna use these just to cut out circles, and again, just to create some movement. So just pinch some of that bottom together, and just leave that to dry. Now, once my seahorse cake topper has dried, I'm just gonna go in. I've got some eucalyptus edible tin, and also some glacier blue luster dust. And also go in with a small brush and just add his eye and you can do this with some of your other shapes just to make them look a little bit more 3d now when i add the shapes that we've made onto the cake i want to add these along with some edible sand so i've just got some digestive biscuits and a sandwich bag and using my rolling pin just go in and crunch these down so that they resemble sand Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna add onto my cake is some areas with some of the edible sand. So I'm gonna take some of my leftover buttercream and add some of this around the base of the cake. I can then take some of that sand, add it on top of that buttercream, just pushing down slightly until you can't see any more of the blue. I'm also gonna do exactly the same just on the top. So just add a little mound. Now I'm gonna start with the wavy seaweed that I created and just along this bottom edge and also some on the top, I'm gonna to push that into the buttercream and just against the side of the cake. And I'm just mixing the different colors together. Now on the top of the cake, I'm gonna add in some of my pink coral. I can then use this to rest some more of my seaweed up against. Then got a few pieces of coral to add in along with our seashells. So I'm just pushing them against that buttercream. I've then got my starfish. So I'm gonna take these and just add a small amount of buttercream just onto the back to help that stick. And lastly, we've got our seahorse. So I'm just gonna use the cocktail stick and just push that into the cake. Now, the last thing that this cake needs is some sprinkles, or in this case, some bubbles. So I'm gonna pick some of these out and just add them into the cake just by pushing them against the edge. 
So here we have the finished under the sea themed cake with this really pretty marbled buttercream effect on the side. I really hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial and will be able to use this effect or this cake design in your own cake decorating. If you have enjoyed the video as always don't forget to give it a like and if you know somebody else who would enjoy the video then don't forget to share. Plus if you haven't already you can subscribe to the Cakes by Nage YouTube channel for more videos like this. Don't forget to hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button as this will just alert you every time I upload a new video. So until next time, bye!